Hey guys, welcome to this week's edition of Neuromotor Control with Lucas and Nathan. Yeah, so today we're going to talk about how the firing of a neuron in the primary motor cortex can result in the contraction of a muscle, whereas at the same time a, a neuron in the spinal cord can detect the same contraction. We're also going to discuss why the motor system would be organized this way. So, to begin with, vol voluntary contraction of a muscle to produce a movement begins in the part of the brain known as the primary motor cortex. And we can see this in blue right here. Um, but before a neuron fires in the primary motor cortex, there are several other areas of the cortex that initiate this process. The supplementary motor area works to sequence the movement. The lateral premotor area processes force planning and directional encoding of the movement and also the, the posterior parietal cortex and inferior temp temporal cortex integrate the use of vision by encoding object recognition and spatial awareness. Once these areas of the brain have encoded the planning of the movement, specific neurons of the primary motor cortex are activated in order to cause a contraction of specific muscles in the body. So this is an example of an efferent pathway. So we start off with the firing of a neuron up in the primary motor cortex and this signal is going to transfer down, travel down into the spinal cord. You can see this is this called the spinal cortical tract. It's just one of the very many tracts that the human body has but when we're talking about voluntary movement, cortical spinal tract is the main tract. So these here, we call them upper motor neurons. These are going to synapse with lower motor neurons down here in the spinal cord. So we have the upper motor neurons traveling down the spinal cord and they're going to synapse in the spinal cord with these lower motor neurons right here. So the main type of motor neurons that we're going to talk about right now are alpha motor neurons. So this blue, this blue uh, neuron is going to be an alpha motor neuron. These specifically innervate extrafusal muscle fibers, which are um, involved with muscle contraction. So this is how the primary motor cortex um, can fire and cause muscle contraction. Next, what we're going to look at is how this muscle contraction, contraction is simultaneously detected by neurons in the spinal cord. <clears throat> this is accomplished by afferent sensory neurons which are found in muscles, spindles, and Golgi tendon organs. Um, these afferent neurons encode sensory input about the action of a muscle by sensing the muscle's stretch and contraction. And the more stretch or contraction that occurs, the more these afferent neurons fire. So say in this muscle right here, uh, say the muscle contracts, this is gonna be sensed by the, ten the Golgi tendon organ um, and sent to the spinal cord, um, vice versa. If it's stretched, then it's going to be sensed by the muscle spindle and sent to the spinal cord as well. And this can also, th this um, neural feedback can be used in spinal reflux. So just as a little bit of a side note, um, this information doesn't just um, stay in the spinal cord. It is going to go up into the higher neural structures as well. Um, so we can also see here we have this gamma neuron right here. So we're going to just discuss what that is kind of used for. So gamma neurons, they are basically involved with, um, with uh, muscle spindle sensitivity. So what they do is they, uh, they innervate sensory intrafusal fibers and basically muscle spindles wrap their fibers around these intrafusal fibers. Um, so they are co-activated with alpha neurons so that when alpha neurons fire to contract a muscle, a gamma neuron also fires to maintain appropriate tension in the muscle spindle. Um, in this way, gamma neurons control muscle spindles sensitivity so that they can sense the correct tension uh, or stretch or contraction of a muscle. Yeah. So we're going to look at uh, the third part of our, our question um, about why the motor system is organized this way and what implications does this have on daily life. 
we can see from this picture, this comparison of a young, young little boy compared to this old man, Mr. Fredrickson from the movie Up. Um, we can see that the boy is standing straight and great posture. And this is important because standing straight, it takes one signal, one original signal to keep the muscles contracted in order to stand. So the brain tells the body once to stay standing. And from then on, it doesn't need to think anymore. After that, well, it still, it still thinks, but oh, it's standing. Yeah. After that, after, afferent feedback connected to efferent neur neurons work to regulate the contraction and stretch of all the muscles involved in standing so that posture is maintained without conscious control. Yeah, and so when we compare this little boy to Mr. Fredrickson, who you can see he's pretty hunched over and he needs this uh, dandy walker right here. Um, with age, the afferent um, and efferent pathways, they become greatly slowed and in turn, spinal reflexes, they can't con quickly control unwanted contraction or, or stretch of the muscles involved in standing as well. Um, since muscle stretch is not controlled as well, this opens the possibility of Mr. Fredrickson being able to fall before his reflexes can maintain his balance. So this is this is one of the reasons why he's going to need a walker. Yeah, so we're just going to go over a couple types of reflexes that are used on a daily basis. Uh, the first one is recipro reciprocal inhibition and a stretch reflex. This one works when a muscle is maintaining a specific length in order to keep posture of the leg, for instance, uh, in one place. So if the quadriceps here is maintaining specific length uh, and is unwantedly stretched, the muscle spindle is going to sense this stretch and send the information through afferent feedback to the spinal cord. Um, this synapses with alpha motor neurons and causes immediate contraction of that quadriceps muscle so that the stretch of the muscle is uh, fought against and the posture of the leg is maintained. At the same time, inhibitory neurons are activated. We can see this interneuron is an in inhibitory neuron and that goes and innervates the antagonist muscle as we can see that's the hamstrings here and and that inhib inhibits activation of the hamstrings so that contraction of the quadriceps is more easy. Yeah, so another spinal reflex that we have is one that's controlled by the, uh, the Golgi tendon organ. So as we said earlier, um, when too much force is generated by a muscle, uh, a, a Golgi tendon organ, as you can see just right here, it's going to be activated by the bicep tendon um, being, being contracted. So um, <clears throat> this is in turn is going to, it's going to travel up to the spinal cord and it's going to synapse with an inhibitory interneuron, just like the other reflex. An inhibitory interneuron. And that one is going to, in turn, decrease the firing rate of this alpha motor neuron right here. And basically, this is going to decrease the muscle contraction and, as, and the uh, muscle force. So this, this reflex is useful for regulating the amount of force that we, uh, that we, that we, what's the word for it? <laughs> I don't know, that we need, I guess, yeah. Um, and it helps you maintain a constant force. So, uh, as it says right here, you can, it's, it's used for maintaining constant grip, paper cup. Um, but also, it can be a, a, a protective me mechanism. So imagine that you're, you're lifting something really heavy in, in the gym and just getting jacked. But it, maybe you're at your, your max weight and then um, it's it could be pretty dangerous for you to be contracting too hard you could like tear a muscle or something right so um, this this mechanism is going to cause you to basically um, stop contracting and you're going to drop the weight so um, in this way it's, it's, it's a bit of a protective mechanism as well so overall we can see that these this connection between afferent feedback and efferent Output is used in spinal reflexes to quickly control unwanted stretch or unwanted or too much contraction of a muscle. 
uh, so it's protected against too much stretch or too much contraction, as well as to um, control posture without conscious control. Yeah. Um, yeah. So these are just a few of the, a few of the awesome things that afferent uh, pathways and efferent pathways work together to produce. So thank you for joining us for neuromotor control on this week's edition. See you next week. Thank you.